So Kamala Harris was asked about her support of Medicare for All, and she really stumbled here. She, this is not a good answer. Let's take a look, and then we'll discuss it. What Vice President, what former Vice President Joe Biden would suggest is that you're not necessarily being clear with the American people. And just this past week, he was asked about ending private insurance as we know it. And when he asked about the others, the former vice president responded, so far not. Because 150 million Americans are covered by private insurance. Are you what happens to those 150 million Americans under President Harris? Well, it's the same as the millions of Americans every day that transition into Medicare as seniors. It's seamless without any difference to their coverage in terms of access to, to, to health care. It has to happen over a period of time. There's no question we would have to go from the current system into a Medicare for All system and transition into it. Um, but the idea that there would be any substantial difference in terms of the health care that people receive is just not accurate. So people who have private insurance would eventually have to give that up under your plan? They would eventually be covered under Medicare for All and they would still see their doctor. And that's what they want. How long would this transition take? I think the transition is going to have to take, I mean, the bill is four years. I think it's going to have to take more than that, maybe, to be honest with you. Yeah. And all of this done without a middle class tax hike? Without a middle class tax hike, yes. yes. 30 trillion over 10 years. There are ways to pay for it, also understanding the investment that we are going to be making in a way that is going to reap great benefits in terms of other costs. The investment where? In American health and what we are otherwise paying as a cost for people not having access to health care and the burdens that places on systems across the board when people don't have access to health care. And when, you, when people question that there is no formula for this, that you are going to find money in magical ways is not realistic thinking. How do you respond to that? The status quo is not enough. Listen, when a candidate defends Medicare for all, I want nothing more than to come out here and give that candidate credit. But here's the reality. She doesn't have good answers to the questions from the reporter because she doesn't really believe in it. So when you don't really believe in it, you don't know all the details and all the ins and outs and all the solid arguments in favor of your position. So in a weird roundabout way, she weakens Medicare for all. Because even though she's arguing for it, she's not making any sense. So people who don't know much about it can watch this and go, hmm, she doesn't seem very confident in that position. And she seems like she's kind of incoherent in trying to defend it. And it makes it look bad. So... When you're asked that question, oh, no middle class tax hikes, what you should give is the answer that I advised Bernie to give. And by the way, he started saying it, <laughs> which is kind of awesome. He did it. He just gave a speech on Medicare for all the other day, and he used the framing that I've been talking about. And the framing is when they ask you, hey, are you going to raise middle class taxes? You say this. No, because I'm eliminating private taxes. What are private taxes? Your premiums, your co-pays and your deductibles to the for-profit, rapacious health insurance company. So I'm eliminating that private tax and raising your public taxes, but you will net save money and everybody will be covered and it will be less expensive. That's the answer. Now what Kamala Harris does is she says, no, middle class taxes aren't going to be raised. And then when she's asked like, okay, but then how's it funded? She's like, beep, 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 beep. if you give the answer I'm talking about, it's crystal clear to everybody that well, yes, we are going to have to raise public taxes, but we're eliminating all the private taxes, so you're going to save money. So she basically what she did there, she just said, we're going to have Medicare for all, and we aren't going to have any mechanism to pay for it, except something, something, the savings under the current system, which is so bad, which that, uh, that wouldn't add up. The numbers on that wouldn't add up. So she really like weakened her position by making a bad argument. Because she was too, she didn't want to say, her instinct is right to, to want to avoid saying the middle class is going to have their taxes raised. That instinct is correct. But you have to have a, a, a reasonable, coherent explanation as to why you're saying that. And she doesn't. Again, what my answer would be is, uh, no, middle class taxes are not going to go up. But that's because we're eliminating private taxes that you pay to your for-profit health insurance company. And we're raising public taxes. So uh, she does a really, really bad answer here. Now, having said that, you notice something. 
The only time you get real adversarial reporters is what? When they're asking questions about left-wing positions. Have you noticed that? So only when they're asking questions about free college, only when they're asking questions about eliminating student loan debt, only when they're asking questions about ending war, only when they're asking questions about Medicare for all, do they badger the politician. So think about that. They're adversarial in defense of the status quo. Now, if they were doing their job properly, I submit to you, they should be adversarial in service of the American people, in defense of the American people, and in defense of truth. So what they should be doing is badgering every single candidate who is not in favor of Medicare for all. But they're doing the opposite. They're badgering all the candidates who say they are in favor of Medicare for all. Which is honestly that flips journalism on its head. That flips what the media is supposed to do on its head. So from now on, I'm going to refer to corporate media as anti-media. Because that's what they are. Like, real media is adversarial in defense of the people and in defense of truth. But what you have here is corporate media always is adversarial in defense of the status quo. So you'll see, listen, how many tough questions have been asked about Medicare for All versus how many tough questions have been asked to Joe Biden about his shitty health care plan? The report just came out from the People's Policy Project. 125,000 Americans would die over 10 years if we did Biden care, which still leaves 3% of Americans uninsured. See how many tough questions are going to be asked to Biden about, hey, are you okay with 125,000 Americans dying because they don't have access to health care? Because that's what your plan does. It lets 125,000 people die. How many people die under Medicare for All? Again, they're only adversarial in defense of the status quo. They're adversarial against left-wing ideas. That's why they're anti-media.